The Jamaica Social Investment Fund and Petro Caribe Development Fund have joined forces to construct sanitary conveniences in some inner city areas. Now, what will that mean for the residents? Well, I, I don't have to ask <laughs> our guests. I can tell you what that will mean for the residents. You can do your business and flush it away. Omar Sweeney is the general manager of technical services at the Jamaica Social Investment Fund. Um, I won't ask you what that will mean for <laughs> the residents, but where exactly do you plan to put these conveniences? Because I, I don't think we have enough in Jamaica, which is why you see people doing their business up against a wall or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, where will they be? Well, specifically, they'll be in the communities of Denham Town, mm -hmm. Fletcher's Land, Hannah Town, and Tivoli Gardens slash Midtown, and Greater Downtown Kingston, uh, more specifically Raytown, Tel Aviv, uh, so it is, it is in the core area of central downtown that we're going to start. Um, yeah. They're going to start typically in the, in the tenement yards. And, and I wanted to start by saying that access to proper sanitation and water is a, it affects 2.5 billion people across the world. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Jamaica is no different. And so we're faced, however, with a problem of scandal bags, chitin as it's known. And many of this, uh, you know, it, it gets into the into the gullies, ends up in the harbor, that sort of thing. I'm sorry, kiting. Kiting, you know, they, they they do their business and it's put in a scandal bag and thrown, right? And uh, so what happens is that everyday Jamaicans going about their business in uh, these inner city, high density population areas, right? So they have to be stepping over. The you know, potential it's, it's just is a, there for disease, right. and absolutely, and so on and so absolutely. On. Uh, and so that is the catalyst for doing this. That's yes, the reason. That's that's the main reason. Um, and what we have is that in these areas, you have as many as forty people that have access to only one solution if they have access. Okay, and so what we're seeing. I'm seen, sorry, am I, are we talking about Jamaica or Darfur or whatever? We're, we're talking about a real situation in Jamaica. And so. 40 uh, people who share one unit? Who share one unit if there's a unit they have access to. And I'm saying in, in, our, in, our, the, in, in the downtown area. And, and since 2006, um, you would know, Joseph has been working in the inner city communities across Jamaica. And this is something that we have faced. And, and it's something we have to address first before we can talk to anybody about anything else. And so what we have seen in tenement yards is that you have 25 to 40 people living in one yard and they have no access to... to yeah, to, I don't to, know why I would even have assumed that there would have been access to sanitary conveniences because um, it, a lot of the times it's a squatter area, right? We call it transient. People are transient. You know, it's <laughs> right. been happening for the last 50, 60 years. People right. are transient as they come into Kingston. They, they, they go somewhere at, until they can you know, move yeah. on. You know, I realize that you, you're trying to uh, put in a solution, but one unit for 40 people seems to me like something that's, that can create greater problems. No, the, the, mm -hmm. some of them have, but you are, the ones when, you put, when you do the work that you are going to do, that will result in how many... Well, units, as you call it. I might just call it. How many toilets will there be? What we're aiming to do is to get the ratio down to about eight to ten persons having access to one unit. She you know, and so it's just the reality. And what I wanted to say is that the community renewal program, which is a significant program that has emerged from last year uh, May, uh, the government has put a, a priority on this program, and mm -hmm. this program is to reintroduce the state into inner city communities, state services. Right. And so the Petra Carib Fund has assisted Joseph with a, with a grant to go into these communities and, and provide these solutions. And you're providing more than just toilets, right? We provide there are units. Mm -hmm. We've got there, showers. There are showers. There's a, a cistern, a wash tub for them to do, whether it's cooking or washing their clothes. And so this is a total complete unit. Now we started last year with a pilot and we completed 13 units. And what's important is that the, the, the household, the, the owners, they actually participate in the construction. Who maintains them? They, they are trained in maintenance. They're trained in, 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 in hygiene and, and sanitary, um, um, you know, how to, how to keep the thing sanitary. And so it is not only just giving a unit or providing a solution, it is also you know, to a total upliftment of, of their situation. So their donation can be either in cash or kind, but whichever community you're going in has to participate or has to donate, has to make some kind of contribution to the project. 
Yes, so we the, do. Right. So the ongoing project now, I, I understand you have folks who are um, helping to, to dig land and helping just getting involved yes. in the work yeah. of it. You know, frankly, you know, it, it's a personal situation. And people are quite, <laughs> yes. quite, they're quite eager to, to, to participate right. in, in, getting this, in getting it done right. Mm -hmm. um, we found that the quality of the units that are provided is good. They're well maintained. And, and, and also the training portion that comes with it. And so, I mean, you know, what we need is just more money so we can really, you know, get to a point where... Well, where I was going to ask you if, if this isn't like putting a, a band-aid band on, on, a, yeah. on, a, on a throat wound that yeah. is gushing. Uh, because ultimately, mm -hmm. the, the ideal situation would be to house these people mm -hmm. properly. But that's, that's beyond our means at the moment. So this is seen as a next best thing? I guess it's a start. The question is, what is the greater good? Um, because of the, the, the problem with um, dysentery diseases. Right. Um, you know, these are, like I said, these are hard working people. They, they, they are amongst us every day, mm -hmm. you know, on the buses. Mm -hmm. And so what is the greater good for the public? And so the greater good for the public is to ensure that we, as best as possible we provide these solutions. I, I also want to point out that um, to assist the communities because it's done through our community-based contracting mm -hmm. model where the community actually manages the funds and everything. And so we've gotten tremendous support from the Rotary Club of Downtown mm -hmm. Kingston. Um, they provide the technical assistance through, through members in the club who are engineers, um, etc., accountants. They, they, they assist the community. So mm -hmm. they've been providing a lot of support as a service organization. So it's a model that we find that works. Um, we're, we, we're, we're so pleased that Petra Carib has now uh, come on board and support the, the second phase. The first phase was funded by the EU. And so, you know, this is how we, we try to, to, ah. to, to enable more solutions like what you're saying, uh, Simon. Mm. This is very depressing. All right. Um, so it's where, five where, of them. Where, where are our politicians? Petro Carib, mm -hmm. EU. Well, I mean. Well, I have to say, you know, it's a government that is really pushing. I mean, I, I, th I have to give, you know, in all fairness, the government has identified right. that in these high density well, areas. Well, props to them um, for that. But yes. and, and you wouldn't blame this government in particular for this type of situation. You have to successive. look at our successive yes. governments who have yes. allowed yes. Yes. people to live in these kind of conditions. No, that's correct. 40 <laughs> people, one toilet. No, man. No, man. Unimaginable. So it's five? You're saying five, five communities, communities yes. with a unit each? You're doing 45 we're single? We're actually going to do, we're targeting between 75 and 100 units. Okay. 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 Uh, and I say that because we're also doing infrastructure upgrades because these units in terms of environmentally have to be connected to the central sewer right, lines. Right. And so there will be some unforeseen conditions we expect. So what we, we hope to achieve is between 75 and 100 units. In what time period? Um, in the next six months. Okay. okay. And right. so after that, we're just hopeful that the next tranche will come along. Sanitation is something Joseph has been doing for the last yeah. 15 years. It's about 10% of our portfolio. So it's not spoken about, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. converting pit latrines all right, across right, the island. We've been right. doing it. And so it's just now a focus on the inner city areas where we have these high density populations. You need to help out some of the schools next. Hmm. But that's another story yeah, altogether. Another story. Thank you very much, right, sir. Thank Omar, you. Omar Sweeney. Sweeney. General Manager <laughs> of Technical Services at the Jamaica Social Investment Fund. What's coming up? First news update. Is it? Yes, sir. All right.